Alrighty, here's the absolute value derivatives video that you guys asked for. So, really quick review. The absolute value of x can be re rewritten as the square root of x squared. And so the derivative of the absolute value of x can be rewritten as the derivative of the square root of x squared. And we're going to rewrite the square root of x squared as x squared to the one half. But we're not going to combine these exponents because that would defeat the purpose. Instead, we're going to use the chain rule. So uh, the derivative of anything to the one half is one half stuff to the negative one half. And then you take the derivative of the inside, the derivative of x squared is 2x. And then you do a little cleanup and you get the derivative of the absolute value of x is equal to x over the absolute value of x. Then we wanted to do a more complicated problem, but we ran out of time. So here it is. The problem was y equals 2x minus 4 plus x minus 2 over the absolute value of x minus 2. And what we want is we want to find the derivative. The first part's really easy. The derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of negative 4 is 0. Plus, and now we need the derivative of this. Well, this thing is a quotient, so I'm going to use the quotient rule. Low d high minus high d low over low squared. So low, x minus 2, d high, well, the derivative of the top is 1, minus high, d low. Oh my gosh. Okay. The derivative of an absolute value is the stuff over the stuff inside the absolute value. And then we have to remember the chain rule and take the derivative of this stuff. Well, the derivative of x minus 2 is just 1. So if you forgot the chain rule, it's not like the end of the world here, but it could be a big problem on another question. And then all over low squared. Wow, that is ugly and scary looking. We're actually done with the calculus part, and now we're just going to push numbers around. So, wow. Okay, I'm thinking that I would like to get um, a common denominator, and that's what I'm going to do first. So 2 plus, I'm going to multiply this by x minus 2, so that I have x minus 2 squared and then minus x minus 2. x minus 2 times x minus 2 is x minus 2 squared. Oh boy. This is all over the absolute value of x minus 2. And again, the reason I can say that is because I multiplied this by x minus 2 over x minus 2. So I have this over, well, absolute value, right? I have this over uh, x minus 2. Okay times, and instead of having this big double-decker fraction, I'm going to multiply by 1 over the absolute value of x minus 2 squared. Wow. Here's the thing. The absolute value squared is going to give me exactly the same as not the absolute value squared. So I can factor out x minus 2, I can rewrite this like that and like that because they're equivalent. And then I can turn the page because I'm out of room. Okay, Patrick is so much smoother. Oh well. Okay, so we have 2 plus. I'm going to factor out an x minus 2 quantity squared. And what I have left is, well, 1 minus 1, which is 0, over the absolute value of x minus 2, times 1 over x minus 2 quantity squared. Cancel, cancel. Oh, but I have 1 minus 1. Interesting. So what I have is 2 plus 0 divided by the absolute value of x minus 2. And, um, wow, this equals zero, except when x equals two. Okay, when x equals two, this is undefined. So, x 
cannot equal 2. Slope is undefined at x equals 2. So what it's saying is that the slope of this function is always equal to 2, except something weird happens right around um, x equals 2. Let's look at it on uh, Desmos and see what the heck we're dealing with. So I entered the function, and here we have it. This is 2x minus 4 plus x minus 2 over the absolute value of x minus 2, and lo and behold, it does have a slope equal to 2, and there is something weird going on at x equals 2, and it looks like there's a discontinuity, which would be why the derivative does not exist at x equals 2. Cool, huh?